Welcome, Life Church family. It is another opportunity to worship our Creator. Well, John is my name, and I'm going to be taking you through the family business. Uh, first of all, on the 8th, which is this coming Friday, on the 8th, we have an in-person prayer moment as a church. Come and we, and we worship together. We pray to a God that has made it possible that we are even able to come and congregate again in person this very Friday. We'll be happy to see you as we pray together. Uh, on another note, uh, some people have been, uh, have been there and are wondering, when are we coming back to worship together on, on, on a Sunday morning? When are we coming? When are we going to be holding our in-person services? Well, on the 10th, on the 10th, that is this coming Sunday, we'll be reopening our in-person services. We'll be holding two services. So we're welcoming you. And it's not just coming again to, to fellowship together. No, we are also going to be celebrating 33 years of existence as a local church, life church. So come, we eat some cake together. I believe it is going to be incredible. It's not only cake and the 33 years. You all know that it's going to be the Independence Week. Well, our dress code, in a way to honor that, our dress code we're going to put on the Uganda flag colors, black, yellow, and red. Come excited. We jump together, think together. We are waiting for you. Amen. Amen. Well, on the same note, towards the general life and uh, the youths. Uh, you're there, you've been there wondering also when are we as the youth coming back to, you know, in our in-person services. Well, on the 16th, that's when we, the young men, the, the, the youths are coming back at church, you know, we are groups that we miss so much. Well, on the 16th, general life will be here. So we welcome you. Uh, uh, the youths will be here waiting for you, glad to, to, you know, to jump, dance, and do all crazy stuffs together. Um, on the same note, on the same note, well, we celebrate marriages. We celebrate marriage. It is really a very fundamental thing here in Life Church. Well, on that same note, we have a few wedding bands for you today. Well, Lumansi Habat, Mokasa, son of the late Tebandeke Frederick, and Miss Namusoke Alice of Luafu, of Luafu Machi in the Kampala district, and Lutuama Catherine, daughter of Mr. Frederick Lutuama, and Mrs. Catherine Lutuama of, Wa, of Bualula, Metiana district, wish to enter into holy matrimony at 11 a.m. on 23rd, October to 2021 at Life Church Namasuba. Whoever has a just cause that would hinder them, let him or her come and tell the pastors. If not, after the date above, let he or she hold his peace forever. Then, now a wedding band too. Uh, it says, Owa Kubariho, Owa Kubariho Leo, son of Mr. Mahirane Days and Miss Kasande Budesiano of Champoza, Champoza, Kanungu District, and Kwagala Doreen Winfred, daughter of Mr. Molinda Moses and Miss Nasazi Josephine of Kawempe, Kampala District wish to enter into holy matrimony at 4 a.m. on 30th October 2021 at Life Church Namasuba. Whoever has a just cause that would hinder them, let him or her come and tell the pastors. If not, after the date above, let him or she hold his peace forever. Well, those were our wedding bands, and we are excited about those that are getting married. Well, to you who would like to get our monthly schedule meetings, well, I, I request you to go at our website, which is Life Church Uganda, and you'll get all that information. Well, we come in 
to a moment of giving into the house of God. But I would like for us to thank you for your continuous generosity that has, that has made us possible to reach out to different people and different brothers. Thank you so, so, so much. We do not take it lightly or for granted. Well, the different ways of how you can give are displayed on your screen. And uh, right about now, you can, you, can just, you can just maybe use wire transfer, mobile money. Those different ways are displayed on your screen. Well, we'll be happy waiting for you on next Sunday as we have our in-person service. Very excited to see you on the day. Good morning, Life Church. You're so welcome to church this morning. We're so glad you could join us this morning. And if, if you could gather your family around and we worship and praise the Lord this morning. Amen. 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 Put your hands together for Jesus.
Jesus Amen. all over and over around the earth. Amen. Amen. All right, who's ready to turn it up in this place? Because church is the best place you could ever be. Amen.
Lord, you can, you can just lift up your hands and declare. Tell him he's a champion forevermore, forevermore. Oh God, oh God, he's champion. He reigns, he reigns, he reigns forever. You reign forevermore. You reign forevermore. from that wonderful, amazing time of worship. And today is yet another great day for us to share the word of the Lord. And we are continuing with our series, Following Jesus. Following Jesus. Why are we talking about this? Because this is an, uh, an amazing person who has ever lived. He's a great man. History records about him. The world talks about him. We need to know the person we are talking about, Jesus, but also be able to follow him. And I'm glad that Pastor Richard was able to prepare a platform for us to get to know that we should be followers of Jesus. The Bible tells us that he left his glories in heaven. He left all his riches and every owner, I'll name it, and he said that I'll go to the earth and I will be with them. I will identify myself with them. And this is when actually we see him choosing his very disciples. This is when we see Peter coming in the picture. This is when we see Andrew. This is when we see Levi. This is when we see all the 12 coming to Jesus. And surely he desired to do life with them. Many times when we read about these men, we think that, oh, God thought that, you know, I need to get maybe Peter. He seems to have a, some money. I think I'll get a lot of money if I walk with Peter. No, these guys really had challenges. These guys had problems. They were actually struggling with anger. They were struggling with greed. Many actually had problems, but Jesus had a mission. His desire was really to receive them, be with them, but also be able to transform them to become what the Father had ordained them to be. This is why when he was concluding his life here on earth, he tells us the same story. When we read in Matthew 28, verse 18 and up to 20. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of age. So having been with the 12, somehow he desired that you and me learn from him. Today we are talking about a great, a great uh, topic, which is a disciple who disciples others. And that is the mission God wants us, you and me, to acquire or to achieve 
while we are still here on earth. A disciple who disciples others. And I know many of us may look at ourselves that, you know, maybe I've tried all those things, but I've failed. But can I tell you, yes, you're not alone. Jesus also was with the 12, but also there was a Judas. Don't ever beat yourself that well, maybe I'm a loser, I'm a failure, no way. Do what God has called you to do, and surely you'll receive your, your, your wages, as the Bible tells us. Can we pray together as we continue in this today's sermon? Jesus, indeed this is a special day for us. And I pray that may you speak to us even as we get to listen your word. Bless every person who has dedicated their lives to hear you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Yes, he did it while he was here on earth. And he desires that you and me learn from him. There are principles he laid which would, would make us so good if we really apply them in our very lives. And I want to tell you that today's case study is this great disciple called David. What? David. That is the, in the Old Testament, yes. He's a disciple of our Lord God. <laughs> and David is a man who loved God so much. He loved the Lord with all his heart. He loved the Lord with everything he could do, with everything, every word he would ever say. David did that. Can I say, Jesus, or oh God himself said, this is a man after my own heart. He really loved the Lord. Can I tell you today that with our principles and lessons we are going to learn uh, from David, the way he did his life, the way he was able to move through his life. And I believe you and me will be able to do what we are supposed to do today. By the way, David, a little story. This young man was really so anointed. He used to play uh, music instruments and he would really uh, be overwhelmed with the presence of the Lord. So one day, we hear news from the palace, the Nigerians call it palace, the, the news come that, you know, the king is being tormented by demons. <laughs> so they looked for a man or someone who would really help out in this situation. And who, guess what? David was there. And the Bible tells us that they brought David into the palace. And surely he worshipped the Lord. That's why worship is so good. Never take worship as a by the way. Really open up your mouth and sing your praise to God. Something is about to happen to you. So anyways, David worshipped. And when he did that, the demons had to flee. And somehow David stayed in there and he helped here and there. He was given assignments from the palace. Somehow, he would also go for war. But because God was with this young man, God was with him, he was able to conquer. He was able to gain victory. So he got victory after victory, victory after victory. Imagine you are Saul, and this young man is also taking all the victories, which uh, the praises which would have been going to you. So his soul was so jealous. He decided actually to seek David's life. David decided to start running for his life. He ran for his life. I don't know where you're running to, but David ran also. And can I tell you, the Bible tells us that he got into a place called Adulam. Adulam. And this is where he even set his headquarters. Adulam, some people say that it, is, it means a place of refuge. David took his refuge where? In Adulam. And surely he was really crying out to God that, oh Lord, my refuge, okay, I found this cave, I guess I'll be safe. Can I say this? Our Adulam today is the Lord Jesus Christ, and when we run to him, we'll be safe, we'll be protected, and we'll be covered. David ran there and started crying out to God. And surely, God was also hearing his prayer. Can I amaze you? God answered David. How did he do it? He said, for me to answer David, I need to bring in these men 
who are troubled, men who are, who are in distress, men who are discontented, men who are in disbelief, in debt. And these are the guys God brought to David. Let's read the scripture in, in 1 Samuel chapter 22, verse 1 up to 2. What does the Bible say? David departed from there and escaped to a cave called Adullam. And when his brothers and all his father's house had it, they went down there to him. And everyone who was in distress, and everyone who was in debt, and everyone who was a bitter of soul, gathered to him, and he became commander over them. And there were with him about 400 men. God answering David's prayer, his answer was the 400 men who were in distress, in debt, but also discontented. What an answer. I don't know which answer you are waiting from God. I don't know what you are really seeking for. I don't know what you're actually crying and really waiting for God to answer you. David received that answer. But the Bible tells us that he became commander of them. A work had begun. A work had begun. Remember, he's a man who had given his life to worship God, a man who has given his life to love on God. Now God brings him these young men, these men, whether they were young or whatever, and God expects him to transfer everything he had received into these men. Have you ever heard or even read that there was a time when he was asked so at maybe distressed and they didn't know what to do. And the scriptures do say this, that David encouraged himself in the Lord. So meaning that there is a secret he had. So God bringing these men, it was not by coincidence, it was on purpose. And who are these men, by the way? When we are talking about distress, these are men who were in pain. Pain brought about by rejection of the world. I know you and me, we are surrounded by people who have been rejected, maybe by their parents, maybe by their fiancés, maybe by their bosses, maybe something has happened and they are in pain. Maybe those who are in grief, someone who has actually lost the, uh, their possessions, they, they don't have anywhere to turn to. The men who are in need, they don't have a comfort, they don't have a relationship to express themselves. These are the men who came to David. How about those who were in debt? You and me know very well that it has been by the grace and the mercy of Jesus Christ. Jesus himself went to the cross to pay for our debt, which is sin. There are many who are over there who have not acknowledged that Jesus already did that for them. So such category, actually, were the men who gathered around David. Imagine that. And also, men who were discontented. Imagine. It means these men were not satisfied. They had tried out on many other things, but they were not feeling content. They, have, they felt that maybe something is missing. There is a vacuum deep within them, and they needed something. To, to kind of fill up their lives. They find no purpose in life. They have tried everything. They have tried to get money. They have tried to drink. They have tried women. They have tried men. They have tried everything. But nothing is satisfying them. Can I say this, that we are being surrounded by the same categories of people? And God says, God is saying, Go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations. And surely he came and he did it. And he calls you and me also to arise and be able to do what we are supposed to do. So I do have a few principles which are really going to help us to do the needful. And I know when we do apply these, somehow by the grace of God, by the help of the Spirit of the Lord, you and me, we are going to leave a legacy by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. And point number one is be a person with a vision. 
Oh, what are you saying? Don't I have my eyes? I've been seeing all my life. Yes, thank you. But also I want to tell you that vision goes beyond what you see on the physical and the natural. Vision goes beyond what is available, what is uh, present right now. Vision goes way beyond your imaginations. It is bigger than you. And this is why I'm saying get, be a person with a vision. And this will help you to be the person God really wants you to be. You know, the Bible tells us here that in Hebrews chapter 12, verse, verse 3, that fixing our eyes on to Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith, for the joy which was set before him, he endured the pain, he endured the cross, he endured everything, the shame, and, should, and said, surely, I'll go and die for them. I'll go. For the joy that was said before him. You know what joy? The joy, what the, the Bible is talking about, the joy. It is you and me. And when he saw you, and when he saw me, he said, you know what? I will go. By that time, I was not there. You were not there. But he saw you before you even you came to this world. Be a person with a vision. Vision will enable you to see people differently. Vision will enable you to see things differently. When you have a distorted vision, it is going to ha actually lead you to have a distorted produce. Because you see nothing is going to come out of this. I don't think ah, this is a waste. I can't waste my time in this. And you know, if you think you can't waste your time in this, Maybe you're missing out on the big point, which is Jesus. I remember, I came to this church. I was a young man. Pastors do know the story. Actually, I had not grown up with my dad. Uh, he had rejected me. I didn't know even that parental love. But I was received by the pastors of this house. I would be in their homes, in their family, with, the, with them in their families, and we would really celebrate life. And actually, it is where I learned that it is so good for someone to be responsible as a husband. Praise the Lord. Where would I have learned that? I really appreciate my pastors. They saw it way when I was still a young man. Look at what the Lord has done. Look beyond you. Don't focus on, on for today. I know God will enable you to raise many who are going to touch nations, who are going to touch different areas in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Point number two, be a person under submission. Be a person under submission. The best way to lead is to follow. The question is, whom are you following? Whom are you following? Do you know that the Lord Jesus Christ submitted himself to the Father? Wow! <laughs> if God was able to submit, then how about you and me? Be a person under submission. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21, I believe that submit one to another in reverence to Christ. Submit. That's when actually your goodness is going to come out of you so that you have become a blessing to many. When God, when Jesus submitted, we see that he was able to impact and touch many lives. When you do not have a cover over you, it is going to be hard to fulfill the plans of God over your life. Can I tell you today, submit yourself. There are different levels of authority God has laid before you. There are your parents. Are you submitting to them? Maybe your pastors. Are you submitting to your leaders, church leaders? How about the government? Yes, you may hate the government. Nowadays, Twakoa. <laughs> but how submissive are you? And in all those are the principles which you remember what Jesus did. He said that, you know what? 
if we are, you, you bring that money, he was telling Peter. So what belongs to Caesar is for Caesar. Meaning that he was even submitting to, he would have said, you know what, uh, uh, <laughs> that one, I don't have any deal with them. Are you a person under submission? Whom are you accountable to? Who knows your life? Who can say, don't go there? And you listen. We need to be a person who really under, you submit your, your mission under someone and you'll be a blessing to many. You'll be able to disciple many others. When people see how you submit yourself, they will submit to you. When you fail to submit to whoever is over you, it will be so hard for them to submit to you. Be a person under submission. Point number three. Be a person with a good example. Be a person with a good example. How is your lifestyle? <laughs> How is your lifestyle? Okay, let me ask this question. What do the neighbors speak about you? Ouch. All right. If people were honest, we are very honest, what would they speak about you? Your behaviors, your character. Is it about, okay, it is time for the Bible, then okay, let's do the Bible. Then when the Bible is done, you are a different person. By that, we are not going to be of any impact in this world. We need to be people who have a good example. We need to live exemplarily to those around us. Paul says that follow me as I follow Christ. Can you boldly say that? <laughs> Can you tell the people in your house, follow me as I follow Christ? Okay. Oh, you're saying uh, I don't have people in my house. Can you tell the people around you, eh? your neighbors, your friends, follow me as I follow Christ? This is when we hear people say, okay, you hear, okay, hear what I say, but you know some of my actions, don't take them, okay? Uh-uh. Be exemplary. This is when we'll be able to win. What does the Bible say? In 1 Peter 2.21, for, for as a believer, you have been called for this purpose. Since Christ suffered for you, leaving an example. What did Christ do? He suffered for you, leaving an example so that you may follow in his footsteps. Uh-huh. What does John say? John 13, 12 to 17. He says, So when he had washed their feet, taken his garments, and sat down, and sat down again, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher <laughs> and Lord, and you say, Well, for so I am. So if then, if I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. <laughs> Let me go to verse 16. Most assuredly I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is he who is sent greater than he who has sent him. God is challenging you and me. Can you be a person who can be exemplary to the point of becoming a slave? Because they used to have these people who would really be by the door side and they would actually wash people's feet. People's feet. Did you hear that? Peep. <laughs> you get the point. Now, maybe for us, our, <laughs> maybe some of our feet are clean. But just imagine people who used to walk, they would sweat, they would be in the desert and all that and someone had to incline down there and wash clean and that person was called a slave there. And Jesus was teaching them that, you know what? Be exemplary. Don't, don't become a boss everywhere. No, it is not going to work. I left my glories in heaven. I know I am God, but I did not put those titles on me. I decided to live life 
and all these things God was teaching us that we need to learn those principles such that we may become effective. He, lay, he left everything and became like you and me. And that's why we can boldly say, I am saved because of the love of Jesus Christ. Are you a person who is exemplary? Do the people around you, can they copy your speech? Yeah, can they copy your speech? Can they take your actions and say, okay, this is what we are going to do as this group. And you would really be filled with joy that, yes, let's go by that. Let's live exemplarily. Then we'll be able to disciple others. The last point here is that be a person who loves with provision. <laughs> be a person who loves with provision. What are you saying? Yes, I'm here to explain. The Bible says very clearly here in 1 John chapter 3, verse 16, and I want to read these verses, these verses very well to us so that they help us understand what we are talking about. By this we know love, because he laid his life for us, and we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. This is the word of the Lord. <laughs> Let me also read John 13, 34 to 38. What does it say? 34. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another by this, all will know that you are my disciples. If you have love for one another. <laughs> Verse 36 says, Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered him, where I'm going, you cannot follow me now, but you shall follow me afterwards. Peter said, Lord, why can't I follow you now? What are you talking about, Jesus? And I, I will lay down my life for your sake. I'll lay down my life for your sake. And 38, he adds, Jesus answered him, Will you lay down your life for my sake? Most assuredly, I say to you, the rooster shall not crow till you have denied me three times. Imagine, denied me three times. Many times, many times we get excited with the word we have received. Oh God, <laughs> I am here and I'm your man. I am your woman. I am your child. Oh yes, send me, send me and I will go. Thank you for your zeal. The question I have for you is here. Are you ready to lay down your life for the sake of others? Because this is what actually Peter was going through. He thought that he was going to do or fulfill everything by his own strength. And Jesus actually asked, are you ready? And you know when the Bible tells us in John 21, the last chapter there, and Jesus comes to this same guy, asks, oh, Peter, do you love me? Yes, I love you. Do you love me? You know. <laughs> and Peter did not feel really good. Jesus repeated the same question three times. Yes, when you go to the deep, you, there, there are different meanings of those words. But I believe, I believe, God really was challenging Peter that you know what? It is now time for you. If you say that you love me, you are going to lay down your life. Actually, he explains that when you are young, when you are young, maybe they treat you with the way you, can, you may not really want. Or even when you're old, there are times when you have to lay down your will. There are times when you have to lay down your, your, your opinions. Dying to self. Dying to self. And when you die to self, you are looking beyond you. For the joy that was set, we read that, dying to self. So as we really embark on this following Jesus, 
my, I employ you, and I really, I really beg you, let's be people who are given to the mission God has laid before us. And if he says that, you know, I did lay an example for you, you can also do it. I believe that you can do it. And together, you and me, we are going to make disciples of all nations because they see the many people around us and they are in need of Jesus. And not just converts, but disciples. Can we pray together? Father, may you empower us today because we can't do it without you. There is this young man, there is this young woman, there is this person, Lord, watching today. Maybe they've heard and they're asking, how can I do this? I pray that you overwhelm them by the power of the Spirit of God, that they will never be the same again. And let them do what they ought to do. Oh God is just